Hello, this will be the tutorial for lesson number 14, if, else, with B. Click on number one to begin. Please watch this video. It will talk about the, the new <clears throat> conditional block called if path ahead, do, and then an action in the inside. Please watch that when you get a moment and then click continue. Here is puzzle number two. It is a multiple choice. You'll notice that the new conditional loop, if at flower, do, and then this action is included in this program, and your job is to choose or take an, an educated guess. What do you think is going to happen? Your job here is to pick either A, B, C, or D. Do you think that if the B follows this program, that the B will move to the cloud and try to get nectar no matter what? Do you think the B will move to the cloud and only try to get nectar if there is a flower underneath? Do you think C, the B will move to the cloud and then do nothing no matter what? Or D, do you think the B will not reach the cloud? Pick one of those solutions, <clears throat> and then as soon as you do, this run block will turn orange. Click the run block, the program will run, and then the computer will tell you if you have chosen correctly or not. If you chose correctly, congratulations. If you chose incorrectly, please don't worry about it. Click continue and move on to puzzle number three. So here is our first puzzle where you have to um, use the new conditional block. It says more clouds. Check underneath every cloud to see if it is hiding a flower before you get nectar. If there is a flower underneath the cloud, the bee will need to get the nectar once. So what they're suggesting here is that for each of these clouds, there may be or there may not be a flower underneath. And you will not know what is the case until you hit run. So that's where we're going to use this the conditional block that says that if there is a flower. Of course, based on where the bee is standing right now, we are not ready for that. In order to be ready, we need to get the bee over there and in the direction of the clouds. So make your bee take two steps forward, and then take a right turn. This is what it looks like so far, two steps and then a turn. And in this case, there were two flowers, but let me show you what I mean. If I click it again, Sometimes there will only be one flower, and sometimes it'll be in the other spot. And because you don't know which of those clouds will have a flower, that's where we're going to use this. So we're going to ask her to that after she turns, she's going to take a step forward, and then we're going to say, if there's a flower, get nectar. This is what it looks like for the first cloud. And because there was a flower, it got the nectar. Now let's worry about the second cloud. Take another step and then use the conditional again and get nectar. So in this case, if I click run, if the first cloud is empty, it won't matter. The bee will take another step forward and then check the second position. Here we go. Very good. However, now we have to deal with the fact that we have used 10 blocks instead of eight. And of course, this is where you should be able to, note, be able to notice that there is in fact a pattern here, you'll notice that there are two groups that are exactly the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a repeat loop. We're going to take one of these two groups, put it inside, just one. And because there were two groups, we're going to put a number two in that spot. Go ahead and get rid of those. Now we are at eight out of eight blocks. Look at this case, there were no flowers. Click continue when you are ready. Here is number four. <clears throat> Similar situation. In this case, there are seven clouds that each need to be checked. So for the first cloud, you would need to take a step forward and then check if there is a flower, get nectar. Let's make sure that this works for the first cloud. And it did. Now we do need the B to repeat that spot. Did you notice, hopefully, that there were some empty spots? Every time you click run, some of those clouds will have flowers and some of them will not, and they will always be different than the last time, which is why we're using a conditional, because we don't know if there will be a flower or not. But we do know that she has to check seven spots. Therefore, we're going to simply take this program and put it inside of a repeat loop with the number seven. That way, she will check each of the seven spots, the ones that have flowers and the ones that don't have flowers, like this. Notice that she pauses at each square, whether it is empty or whether there's a flower. 
Good. Click continue when you're ready. Here is number five. This is exactly the same situation as the last one. This case, however, there are, there are no clouds. In this case, you can see that there are some empty spots and some that are not. Nevertheless, we're going to build the exact same solution. So a repeat loop with a number seven, a move forward, and the conditional if there is a flower, get nectar. Run the program. Notice she pauses at every square whether it's empty or not. Click continue, here's puzzle number six. Okay, now instead of worrying about the entire shape or the entire puzzle at once, let's just worry about the first row. There are one, two, three, four, five, six spots. And I'm gonna build it exactly like we did for puzzles number four and number five with a repeat loop, but this time with a number six because there are six spots. There's gonna be a move forward, and the conditional, if at a flower, get nectar. This should be enough just for the first row. Good. Now she needs to take a turn left, and she does need to advance two spots. So make her move forward twice, and then turn to the left again. This time she'll be facing forward, um, north. And now she's ready to do the last row. But I also want you to notice that we are at nine out of 10 blocks. And a good rule of thumb is that if you're ever in this situation where there's a bunch of work that your character needs to do, but you can only get one more block, chances are that block is a repeat loop. So we're gonna ask her to do all of this a second time. So put the entire thing inside, nested inside that other loop with a number two. That brings you to 10 out of 10. There we are. And click continue for puzzle number seven. This will be the last puzzle for this tutorial. <clears throat> the directions say, now I just want to make honey. Some of these clouds might have honeycombs under them. So instead of flowers, it'll be, there will be honeycombs. Be sure to check if a honeycomb is hiding behind each cloud. If there is a honeycomb, the bee will only need to make honey once. So instead of using the get nectar, now we're going to be using the make honey. And of course, in order for her to get to that spot, she does need to take two steps. So take two steps there. And then check to see if there is a honeycomb. And if there is, make honey. Let's see if that works just for that row. Good. And then she will have to take a turn to the left. Run it again just to be sure. Good. Now the next one, for the next row, she does need to advance two steps again, just like we did at the beginning. And then at the very end, we'll have to check for a honeycomb, just like we did here at the beginning. So we're simply asking her to do this set of steps all over again. Also, please notice that we are six out of seven blocks. And again, because there's only one more block we can add, it is very likely a repeat loop. Put the entire program inside with a two. And that's it. That is the end of this tutorial. Thank you.